We're uh, here in Venice, Florida, the home of uh, Phase 5 Wake Surfers, uh, hanging out with uh, seven-time world champion and team uh, manager for Phase 5, Drew Daniello. And we're going to talk a bit about the, some of the skim boards from uh, Phase 5. So there's three boards we're going to talk about. The uh, new <coughs> Phase 5 Diamond CL, the one that's proven to be a, a winner for many years is the Diamond and uh, Drew's Hammerhead board. So Drew, let's run through those different boards. All right, let's do it. Let's start with the Daniela Diamond. It's been in the lineup for five or six years now. Um, the big unique thing about the board here is the tail. So it keeps a nice wide tail, but then it's pulled in, which still allows you to turn a little bit better on it. Um, it also keeps this board a little bit freer, which when we get into comparing this with the Hammerhead, we'll, we'll hit more on that. But super solid board, comes in three sizes, 51, 54, 57. Uh, the other new thing is the 57 inch is now a three quarter inch foam instead of the one inch foam. And you don't really lose anything as far as size of the rider. You just gain a lot more mobility of the board. Okay, cool. This year, we wanted to do a new composite and the, this is the Diamond CL. So it's the same proven shape that we've had for years with the Diamond and we put it into like a proper and oogle style build, which is called our composite light construction, right. which is where the CL on the Diamond CL comes from. So now you can get the same amazing ride as a Diamond. So same Diamond shape, a little bit cheaper than dropping the carbon fiber price, you know? So if someone's just getting into it, wants to have that fun board that's good to ride, but isn't ready to spend the money on a carbon, this is kind of that, uh, that bridge to step them up to that one. The biggest difference between the CL and the carbon, when you go to the carbon fiber, the carbon fiber keeps the board really stiff. So when you're riding, there's no flex in it. So as a board flexes, it loses its true shape and it pushes the belly down. So now all of a sudden, instead of gliding across the water, you start to push water. Um, right. So the biggest difference that I noticed going from a composite light board to a carbon board is the amount of speed that a carbon board has anywhere on the wave. Right. Like when this falls back in the pocket, it's a little bit more work. On the carbon fiber, it's kind of just lean forward and it's like a rocket ship for you. Nice. So that's going to be the big difference there as far as the carbon compared to the composite light. Okay, cool. <coughs> the hammerhead. The hammerhead. So this one's got a couple unique things to it. The first thing you notice, obviously, is that the nose has been chopped off. Right. So this board, originally I, I designed it and gave it to Bob and said, hey, I don't know what it's going to do, but it might be something fun to put in the lineup. It's something that people can buy and have another option on the boat. The nose serves a couple purposes. One, this board's only 50 inches, but when you're riding it, it has the float and the speed of a board that's like 55 inches. Right. As far as if the nose was still there. Um, so it's super fast, but you're still riding a smaller board, which spins easier. The other big advantage is when you start to do shove and you're riding the board backwards or revert, Instead of riding on a little tiny point that sinks in the water and doesn't give you a lot of drive, you now basically have like another tail behind you. So now when this board, I can ride it backwards and do all the tricks that I do with my board forward. So it almost opens up a whole new realm of tricks for you. Um, right. So being more s more squared off, if I get you on this, gives you a bit more push right. when you right. switch. It gives you more surface area in the back, keeps you higher, and it keeps it a lot more stable when it's backwards as opposed to just a little pointy nose. Right, okay, cool. So then the other big difference, if you want to grab the, the regular diamond. Um, so as you can see on the tail, the diamond's got the cut-ins to make the diamond shape to where this we left it nice and full. So on the hammerhead, you're going to have your leading edge is a lot longer, which is going to lock into the wave. This board bites into the wave and is a lot more stable to where the diamond has a lot more of that kind of loose and slide around feeling. Okay. Um, and it took me a little while to actually adjust from it because I was so used to landing a big trick on this and just kind of letting it spin out a little bit to where when this hits the water and you get your heels back in it, like it just sits in and locks in and goes. The other thing is with it being wider here, again, more planing surface. So the more planing surface you have, the higher the board stays in the water and the more drive you're gonna get towards the boat. Okay. So again, wide tail, a lot of weight on the back, so you're riding it like a traditional surf or skim board instead of always on the front foot. Okay, now as a rider, I'm thinking, you know, I'm debating between these two great boards. You know, what's gonna tip me one way or the other? You say you get that question a lot, so Yeah, we do so get do that we. question a lot. Um, one thing I would say on the hammerhead, now there's guys obviously under like 120, 130 pounds that ride it and love it. I typically, somebody in that weight range, I would put them onto the diamond because it doesn't feel as big of a board. Okay. And it's gonna be a little bit easier for them to control it with that weight to where 
the narrower tail is going to be easier to push and slow down to where when you get the planing surface, if you're too light, you can't really dig the tail in to slow the board down. So that's a big factor. Um, another big issue is where they're at in their riding ability. Right. If they're just kind of getting into it, I would shy them again away from the hammerhead and put them on the diamond. A little bit more forgiving. It is a little bit looser, but it, it rides like a true 51 inch board. Right. So they have more control of it. If it's somebody who's looking to go to the next step and really wants to start spinning the board and all that, that's where I'd put them on the hammerhead because when you're spinning and you stop, it does lock into the wave better and it allows bigger guys to ride that smaller board so it spins faster for them. Right, so if you got your spins dialed almost, right. then that's going to take it. This one's going to let you be a little mushy, a little right. washy as you finish because you haven't quite figured out that right. trick yet. A little bit more forgiveness in this board. Okay, cool. That would be the big differences though. So three great boards from uh, Phase 5, the Diamond CL, Diamond, and the Hammerhead, and it's pretty hard to go wrong with any one of them. Absolutely. Thanks a bunch, Drew. No Great problem. to hang Thank out with you, you as Mike. always, Absolutely. buddy. Thank you.